In the middle of the Pacific Ocean, nearly 3,000 miles from Australia, rises the isolated island of Pohnpei. Pohnpei is known as the Garden of Micronesia, and for good reason. Thanks to extremely abundant rainfall, it is home to a dazzling array of jungle flora. Its coastal waters are studded with small islands, like a smattering of little green gems set perfectly in the deep blue of the Pacific. The tiny Temwin Island sits just off Pohnpei's east coast, nestled in a mangrove swamp sprawling out from the shore. Exploring a swamp is a real challenge. The dense mangrove and jungle growth means that traditional aerial photography shows little. But with LIDAR, an aerial laser sensing tool, researchers can peel back the jungle to reveal what is hidden beneath. In 2019, a research team takes to the air above the jungle swamp. Their LIDAR screens show ghostly images of what lies beneath them. And what they find is astounding. There are over 100 rectangular and square islands with channels running between them and huge ruined structures built on top. One structure is the size of a football field. What is this place? The people of Pompeii believe that this place, known as Nan Madal, is haunted, cursed. They say you can see glowing lights at night. Most locals won't even go there. And with dozens of these ominous ruined buildings standing sentinel, it's not totally unreasonable to be a little wary. And maybe that's part of the point, to keep people at bay. Nen Madal seems like it might have served a defensive purpose, as some of these buildings look impenetrable. They're made of massive black stones, some up to 20 feet long and in pentagonal and hexagonal shapes. The buildings almost seem to be stacked up like log cabins. Geologists determine that the stones are columnar basalt, volcanic rocks that naturally break down into rod-like columns, similar to those seen at the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland and at locations across Iceland. In Nan Madal, the rods have been stacked horizontally in an interlocking manner to create these formidable structures. The weight and precise positioning of the stones also help them to stay in place. In lieu of mortar, the people who built Nan Madal used coral rubble to fill the gaps between the rods. Unlike stone, coral is organic, which means that you can determine its age by using uranium thorium series dating. Testing reveals that while the site was likely established in 500 CE, most of the structures date from between 1180 and 1700 CE. This roughly aligns with the rule of the dictatorial Sautilur dynasty, a foreign people who were said to have come to Pohnpei by canoe and declared themselves rulers. The Sautilur were known to be pretty tyrannical leaders. They weren't respectful to the people of the island or to the gods they worshipped. So if this was built by the Sautilers, maybe it being a fortress makes sense. But only a few of the buildings look like they could be defensive. So while it may have defensive elements, Nenmadal is clearly more than just a fortress. The LiDAR scan reveals that the lagoon is comprised of roughly 100 small islands, all of which look like they are floating on top of the ocean, with no real shores or beaches. If you look closely, you realize that these islands aren't just built on normal Earth. They're built on top of a coral reef. Basically, whoever built this place would have had to cover the coral with rocks and fill to create these artificial platforms. That would have taken a tremendous amount of work to do in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Its most grand structure is thought to be a royal temple or mortuary. Its walls are 25 feet high and its cornerstones are thought to weigh over 50 tons, which is all the more impressive because it's built on an artificial island. Normal cities don't usually have such grand ceremonial spaces. This was likely a capital city, the seat of the Sautilur dynasty. The whole place exists on a wildly massive scale. Experts believe that the total weight of rocks in the city is around 750,000 tons. That's an unbelievable amount of basalt. And yet, there are no stones like this found anywhere on Temwen Island.
scientists use X-ray fluorescence technology to test the chemistry of these rocks against others in the region. They believe some of the basalt comes from a volcanic plug on the opposite side of Pompeii, 25 miles away over land and water. During the time that these structures were built, there was no local technology that could have moved these incredibly heavy stones. So how on earth did these stones get there? Part of the problem of figuring this out is that there's no documentation of what happened here. Everything we know is passed down from oral tradition, stories from the people of Pompeii. Local legend has it that the structures of Nan Medal were built by the first two Sotelers, twin sorcerers named Olisipa and Olisapa, and that they moved the massive stones with magic. Some of the stories even say the brothers levitated the stones with sounds of varying pitch. What does sounds of varying pitch even mean? Singing? Chanting? Legend has it that monks in the Himalayas can move stones with chants. Could chanting have levitated these stones? Sound is made when something vibrates and creates sound waves. These waves carry a force and can be used to suspend an object in the air. Using acoustic levitation, scientists have successfully levitated objects up to a few millimeters in size. It sounds unbelievable, but defying gravity with sound is not just the stuff of myths and movies. Researchers have been experimenting with that since the 1930s. Still, it's not exactly moving 50-ton basalt columns. Stonehenge in England has monoliths that weigh up to 30 tons. The bigger ones were sourced locally, but the smaller blue stones, which vary from two to five tons, were from a Welsh quarry almost 200 miles away. Some experts believe the monoliths at Stonehenge were transported by sledges and rollers made of tree trunks. Others think the builders used stone or wooden ball bearings and grooved wooden tracks for transport. While Pompeii isn't really that big, it has 139 mountains. That is a lot of brutal inclines. The stones of Nan Madal would have to roll not just down, but also up massive hills before then hopping over the watery gulf to Temwin Island. So it's highly unlikely that they would have used sledges. Over 10,000 miles away on Easter Island, the locals say that their monoliths, called Moai, actually walked across the island. Paro, the largest Moai ever erected, weighs a whopping 82 tons. That's even heavier than the largest basalt column at Nan Madol. But come on, could a stone actually walk? It's clear that these stones didn't just stroll on their own, but maybe they walked in the same way that you might walk a bookshelf, by rocking it back and forwards and maneuvering it around its center of gravity. The walking method works for some monoliths. In 2019, a design team created massive 4,000-pound masonry units that could be easily moved with just one hand. But those stones were relatively small and precisely calibrated. The stones of Nan Madol are a little more unwieldy and unpredictable. Even if the stones could be walked across the island, researchers wonder how they could have traversed the 2,000-foot gap between the coast of Pompeii and Temwin Island. Some experts believe the columns were put on bamboo rafts and floated over. But when a film crew tested the theory in the 1990s, the heavy basalt columns sank like a stone. To date, there are no definitive answers on how the stones journeyed to Nan Madal. Even if we could figure out how the stones traveled over 25 miles, a towering question would remain. Literally towering. How did they stack all of those stones on top of each other? Some of those walls are 25 feet high. Perhaps the builders of Nan Madal could have built wooden ramps to pull up the stones, similar to the ramps found in a quarry in Hatanab in Egypt. These ancient devices featured a central ramp surrounded by two sets of stairs and a crude pulley system that used ropes wrapped around sturdy posts, all of which allowed workers to pull massive alabaster stones up inclines of more than 20 degrees. Wow. 
maybe there are answers to be found in Egypt, but maybe not, given that the pyramids themselves remain a mystery. Nan Madol is no different. It's so completely baffling that hardly anyone even poses theories at this point, except the locals who attribute its construction to supernatural forces. It seems pretty fitting that the name Nan Madol means in the space between things. When you consider that only half of the islands have been properly surveyed or mapped, there are still so many gaps in what we know about this place. Maybe with more research, we'll be able to fill in those gaps.